we move on to the Big Ten and Ohio State, of course, with Steve Hellwagon from Bucknuts. Steve, how you doing today? I'm doing great, Mark. What's going on? Not too much. Uh, we got you in good shape before the basketball game, correct? Yes. Ohio State Northwestern coming up at 9 o'clock. I did not make the trip tonight. Uh, to Evanston. We had the first day of spring practice here in Columbus today. So uh, we had plenty on our plate uh, back here at the uh, the home office today. What are the chances on the bubble right now? Um, well, they're hanging tough, but they've got to win one of these last two games against Northwestern or against uh, Wisconsin on Sunday. They had the highest of highs last week. They beat a ranked team, Iowa, by 20 points at home. And then they go on the road Saturday on ESPN and lose to Purdue, also a ranked team, by 35 points. And it was the first team that they played without Caleb Wesson, their starting center, who uh, is uh, out uh, right now uh, with a suspension. So uh, I guess at this point, uh, just uh, trying to muddle through till they get him back in there. And uh, Northwestern, the last place team in the Big Ten, if you can't beat them, you may not have a very good uh, case for making the NCAA tournament. Steve Hellwagon joins us on a regular basis from Bucknuts, a 247 sports platform for Ohio State Athletics. Uh, Steve, uh, you said you got a chance to go to spring practice today. Um, any chance to interview any players? Yeah, they had three of the veteran players come over and uh, do some interviews. K.J. Hill, a wide receiver. Uh, they had Jonathan Cooper who's an uh, outstanding defensive end. Uh, there was one more player whose name is uh, slipping my memory at this point, but uh, they also had Ryan Day. He conducted about a 20-minute uh, interview session on his first day uh, as the full-time head coach at a practice session. Obviously, he was the interim head coach last year for the preseason in the first three games. And he said that that uh, period, that uh, basically two-month period as the de facto head coach kind of helped prepare him uh, for the rhythm and everything else that uh, happened today on the field as the head coach of the Ohio State Buckeyes. So big day for him and uh, very impressed with what we saw across the board. Uh, we can attest to the fact that Justin Fields is wearing number one for Ohio State, was on the field throwing footballs uh, for the Buckeyes, working with the new offensive coordinator, Mike Yursich from Oklahoma State, who's also making his debut. Uh, three new assistant, uh, rather four new assistant coaches over on the defensive side as well with Jeff Halfley as the defensive coordinator, Greg Madison, the co-coordinator, Al Washington, and uh, Matt Barnes, special teams coach and secondary assistant. So a lot of new developments. I think uh, a lot of people – want to make sure that Fields is going to carry on what Dwayne Haskins was able to do, which I'm not sure that that's uh, going, to, going to happen to the tune of 54 touchdowns that uh, Dwayne Haskins had uh, this past year between running and throwing. But uh, Fields uh, and the offense probably going to be okay. But uh, perhaps just as big a question is whether uh, Halfley and Madison and these new coaches can get better defense out of Ohio State, maybe going with some different uh, looks and some different tweaks. Obviously, Brendan White, who came on at safety last year, could play a hybrid third linebacker position, uh, linebacker safety hybrid type thing this year, kind of experimenting with a little bit of that. So um, I guess at this point, after one practice, when they're in helmets, jerseys, and shorts, people are making plays all over the field, and uh, everybody's happy. And uh, when they get into pads, uh, when they come back from spring break, it's kind of weird. They do a couple practices just to get everybody going. Then next week, they'll be off for spring break, and then they'll be back the following week, and that's when the, the hitting really begins for spring practice. So Justin Fields unveiling the number one and uh, Buckeye fans, of course, hope that signifies the ranking next to the team name at the conclusion. Go of the get season. your number one jerseys. Or yep. and fives in recent years, but not quite the number one that Ohio State fans uh, desire and expect. Uh, I I'm guessing that Ryan Day has been asked this at some point. I don't know if it's been evident. Obviously, there's only been one practice, but how he's going to conduct this program, I'm sure in many ways, he would be foolish to change much of anything from the way Urban Meyer uh, built uh, 
the best or second best winning percentage in the nation over the last nine years uh, or seven years. But for Ryan Day, has he alluded to what might look different, not just from a nuts and bolts football standpoint, but just his approach to uh, organizing and structuring and leading a program? That's a good point, Mark, because when you take over a program, you want to be your own man have your own people around you. He worked for two years for Urban Meyer before he was given this opportunity to move into the head coaching position on the interim basis last year and now on the permanent basis going forward. And uh, my opinion of what I'm seeing so far is he is going slow. He has retained many of the support personnel. In fact, maybe just about all of them are still part of the program. Uh, Mick Marotti is the strength and conditioning coach. Brian Voltolini is the director of operations. Mark Fantoni in charge of recruiting. So those three are kind of the, the key lieutenants beyond the assistant coaches that they have. They have the same quality control graduate assistant type people, support people in place as well. So there was a lot of continuity. And I think what Ryan Day wants to do is get a year or two under his belt and see where improvements can be made, uh, see where uh, things can be changed for the better. I think uh, they asked him that question today, Mark. And as I alluded just a moment ago, the biggest change Ryan Day foresees in 2019 is the defense. <laughs> So I know that's not a systemic uh, program overarching uh, uh, situation, but I think you look at it that uh, if they can improve the bottom line on defense, I think that's where people will notice the biggest change for Ohio State in 2019. And uh, hopefully, you know, from their standpoint, it parlays into a situation where they're able to win a third straight Big Ten championship and contend for a spot. Uh, in the college football playoff. Well, we just saw an NFL combine that you uh, very well versed us on in terms of a preview last week where Johnny Dixon ran well, Paris Campbell ran out of his mind, Kendall Sheffield couldn't run, but was expected to be uh, by many services, the fastest defensive back on the field. And with the losses up front, uh, why is the defense going to be better? Well, they have nine nine returning starters coming back, and obviously uh, Nick Bosa was a guy who they lost after the third game of the season, and they replaced him with Jonathan Cooper. Uh, Chase Young is coming into his contract year as a junior and uh, could be a potential All-American. Uh, Malik Harrison, an outside linebacker, really came on uh, as the season wore on, and uh Tough Borland was pretty good the year before at middle linebacker, but the Achilles injury that he had kind of hobbled him. He still gave it his best effort, but uh, I think a lot of people view the linebacker group in particular as one that can make a major step up. Uh, Jordan Fuller is back at safety, although he is not practicing this spring. He is uh, suffering from a uh, lower extremity uh, injury of some sort. Uh, coach didn't elaborate on that but he'll be out uh, for the entirety of spring. And that gives some other guys a chance to get some reps and uh, earn some playing time as well. So that's not necessarily a bad thing, but they've got nine guys with starting experience back. It's just putting those nine guys in the right position so that they can succeed, I would say, uh, at, uh, at the top level. So uh, to me, <clears throat> uh, to revamp the defensive staff and get a new set of uh, eyeballs on the situation is probably the best thing that uh, Ryan Day could have done and give everybody a clean slate and the best players will play going forward and they will fashion their scheme around those guys. Steve Hellwagon is a Big Ten senior writer at 247 Sports Bucknuts, Ohio State Athletics, getting ready to take in the Ohio State basketball game against Northwestern, joins us on a regular basis to talk Buckeyes football. Steve, we appreciate uh, you being flexible tonight. We just are going rapid fire with a number of uh, contributors, so I appreciate you're uh, your able to stay fluid and uh, uh, take the spot uh, here about 845 Eastern and get you set for a uh, tip-off. All right, Mark. Well, good luck with the platform. Appreciate it. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate that.